commentator. But first, the state of Illinois, environmentalists, and the operators of coal-fired power plants recently found themselves on the same page. They've all signed on to some of the nation's toughest rules on mercury emissions. In the first of a four-part series on coal and environmental issues, Rich Samuels tells us how this will bring added benefits to people in the Chicago area. Midwest Generation's Crawford plant, located on the north side of the Chicago Sanitarian Ship Canal at Pulaski, has been a familiar Chicago landmark for decades. Crawford Station was built in 1925. The first units went in service. Uh, there have been seven or eight units at Crawford uh, over the years. Today, only units seven and eight are still in service. The other units retired uh, prior to 1980. So the two units that we currently have in operation here were uh, put in service in 1959 and 1961. Midwest Generation's Fisk plant in Chicago's Pilsen neighborhood powered up in 1903. The one currently operating unit here went online in 1959. The company's Waukegan plant opened in 1923. Its three units were installed between 1952 and 1962. The Joliet plant on the Des Plaines River dates from 1916. Its three currently functioning units were installed between 1959 and 1966. Midwest Generation's Will County plant in Romeoville is its newest, with four units installed between 1955 and 1963. Pulverized coal fires all these plants. The temperature of the combustion inside the furnace is about 2200 degrees. And that's where the main fireball is, right in the center. The coal goes in at the corner of the furnace on all four sides. But over the last three decades, the opposition of environmentalists to conventional coal-fired plants has steadily increased. Well, coal is a pretty old and dirty way to get energy. When you burn coal, uh, we burn coal to make energy because you do get a high heat content out of it, and it's relatively cheap to get out of the ground. But after that, that's really where the benefits stop. Anytime you burn coal, you're going to be harming the environment more so than the environment. You're going to be harming people. The bad things that coal contains and releases when it's burned are a consequence of coal's geology. It has many of the materials that were present in the environment back when the coal was, uh, was formed. And so there are just a multitude of trace materials of various metals uh, mercury. It really represents uh, what, what was available in that environment and in the environment at, at the time when it was uh, ultimately turned into rock. And when coal is burned, these undesirable materials are released back into the environment. It's uh, sulfur dioxide, it's nitrogen oxide, it's mercury, and it's carbon dioxide. Those are sort of the four horsemen, if you will, of uh, coal. And sulfur dioxide is important because uh, downwind of the smokestack, it can form particles. These particles uh, can trigger uh, premature death. Uh, it can trigger um, reduced visibility, uh, acid rain. Nitrogen oxides are the culprit that's involved not only in particulates, but in ground level smog. And mercury. Uh, is, is a neurotoxin. We simply can't afford to be releasing it uh, anymore into the atmosphere. And CO2 is a, is a global warming uh, pollutant. Some researchers claim they can quantify the adverse effects coal combustion has on human health. Harvard School of Public Health actually did that calculation for nine northern Illinois power plants, eight of which are owned by Midwest Generation. And for the ones in the Chicago area, which would be Crawford, Fisk, uh, Joliet, uh, 29 and 9, Will County, and Waukegan, uh, they estimated every year about 160 or so premature deaths associated with uh, those uh, sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides emissions from those plants. The challenge faced by the operators of these coal-fired plants since the mid-1970s has been cleaning up the coal they burn. Just as we refine oil, uh, just as we remove sulfur and other impurities from natural gas, uh, we need the technology to do the same with coal. With coal, it's a bigger and a tougher job, but it can be done. Coal mined in Illinois was one of the early casualties of the battle for clean coal. Though it burns hot, it also burns dirty with high sulfur emissions. 
Midwest Generation and other Illinois power producers therefore ship in low-sulfur coal from Wyoming, an alternative cheaper than installing the so-called scrubber technology that would remove the sulfur from Illinois coal before it goes up the stack. Midwest Generation says it presently meets both state and federal standards for sulfur and nitrogen emissions, but it's now committed to reducing those sulfur and nitrogen emissions further and to reduce its mercury emissions 95% by 2018 and to shut down plants or it can't make the grade. When Midwest Generation signed on in December to a proposed state rule to limit mercury emissions below those mandated by federal regulations, the move was hailed by some of Midwest Generation's harshest critics. I think that once Midwest Generation signed on uh, to the mercury agreement, it was huge. It made it an absolute certainty that the rule was going to be finalized, which was wonderful. And now we have the strongest response in the country to a very weak federal mercury proposal. And, and that's fantastic. It's a big deal. We'll do tremendous things to protect children's health in our environment. Uh, Illinois has one of the highest numbers of mercury hotspots in the country. And the pediatricians and the health experts tell us that the result of women, particularly pregnant women, eating mercury-contaminated fish uh, leads to terrible impacts on fetal brain development. The studies show that the uh, mercury that mothers eat uh, particularly methylmercury, is concentrated in the fetus and has long-term consequences on child development. Um, across several types of studies, including those that test cognitive ability, um, those that examine some motor skills, including fine motor skills. Um, so it's really a wide range of effects um, that are potentially caused by the mercury on the child. In short, mercury comes out of the coal plants, it gets into the water, it gets eaten by little fish, which eat, get eaten by bigger fish, and when people eat that fish, they run the risk of mercury poisoning. Federal rules issued in 2005 called on power plants to reduce mercury emissions 70% by 2018. Environmentalists argued this was too little over too long a period. Early in 2006, Illinois significantly upped the ante, calling for a 90% reduction by 2009. This has ultimately been a very, very easy decision. Amaran, which operates four coal-fired plants in central and southern Illinois, signed on to the plan in early August of 2006. Dynagy, which also operates four downstate plants, signed on a few weeks later. But Midwest Generation held out until December of 2006 before embracing the state's proposal. John Bryson heads Edison International, corporate parent of Midwest Generation. What we needed was a more comprehensive and longer term arrangement. Crawford, Fisk and Waukegan will have mercury control devices installed by July of 2008 according to the agreement. Two of the four units at Romeoville will be shut down along with one of the three in Waukegan. In the long term, Midwest has agreed to either install scrubber devices at its remaining plants to further reduce sulfur emissions or to shut them down. There are various points at which we have elections to decide whether to install the technology or to retire units. And that gives us flexibility as we go forward here to evaluate market conditions, evaluate the current state of technology and decide whether to install additional controls. Or in some cases, there may be some of our smaller units that, that are retired. The, the one other part of the agreement that is very important to us is what we would consider to be the growth component. That would be a so-called clean coal project. So that would be a leading demonstration project in the United States that can be put together. That would involve technologies beyond the capabilities of Midwest Generation's present fleet, and decisions to implement that are years away. But the crucial step to reduce mercury output is one that will be taken shortly. And not only is that going to protect Illinois children, but it really sets an example for America to follow. If we have not only a very strong rule, but a rule that the major electricity generators in Illinois ended up supporting really sends a signal, I think, to utilities and regulators in other parts of the country that they can do it too. For Chicago Tonight, this is Rich Samuels. When our coal series continues next month, we'll tell you about a clean coal project that will not only reduce pollution, but also give a boost to the state's 
coal mining industry. Environmental reporting on Chicago Tonight is made possible in part by the Joyce Foundation, dedicated to protecting the Great Lakes, fresh water at the heart of America.